So we are back and I'm so excited to have Claudio and I hope I'm going to say your name right. And if I don't, just embrace my imperfection and say, Jeff, you know, you, you gave it the good old college try, no pun intended. Is it Real Zano? Real Sano. Well, everybody wants to put a Z there, but it's an S. Real Sano. And as you can see, I'm making my wife famous because I have her name on the thing. I don't know how to change it. I'm using her computer. And and we <laughs> love imperfection, right? We talked about there that you go. before we hit Rick. Well, welcome to the show. I'm delighted to have you. Your bio is so impressive. We're going to put it in the podcast episode description. But just let our listeners know, because we're in 65 countries, Claudio. We're pretty proud of that after four seasons. Tell our, tell our listeners a little bit about you. Well, I am the general manager and professional baseball scout with the Global Scouting Bureau in my 22nd year. And I'm also the head baseball coach at Carnegie Mellon University here in Pittsburgh, uh, just wrapping up my 19th year. And I've been coaching for 40 years. I also host uh, or I, I host a, t a boxing TV show. I co-host uh, a, a radio show here in Pittsburgh, a couple podcasts. I host my own podcast where I interview sports legends of the 70s, 80s, and 90s and friends. I wrote a book, um, do a few other things business-wise, and uh, I wrote a leadership book. But uh, I do a bunch of things, and, and I, I'm grateful to be to have the opportunity to do all these things, too, and, and uh, still looking to do more. Well, and, and that's why I wanted to have you on the show. Your your personality comes through live speaking to you face to face, but mm -hmm. it really comes through in everything that I did to make the decision. And, and that's the kind of leader that I like to have on the show. So I'm going to jump into my Thank leadership you. questions and uh, we're going to have a great conversation I was reading your submission and my first question is, I wanna talk about styles of leadership because that's a, we could do a whole show on that, you and I. You talk about having a quote, loose, tight, end quote, style of leadership. Share with us how that was created. Where did it derive from? Because you alluded to all the different things you do. You wear your coaching hat in many different ways. How did this, style of leadership come to fruition and how has it served you? Well, I got the quote from my favorite businessman who happens also to be my favorite golfer, and that's Greg Norman. And they asked him what his management leadership style was, and he very simply said, loose, tight. And what that means is, for example, for me, I tell my players, or at least my team leaders, I say, if there's something I feel strongly about, I'm doing it. If there's something I don't feel strongly about, I'm going to ask you. So, but, but I give my team leaders um, room to lead. Uh, so it's not just me like with a joystick controlling everything, okay? So I, I want them to have skin in the game. I want them to have confidence to, to make a decision. I don't see every, I see an awful lot, you know, but there's so many things going on, be it on the baseball field or in business or the shows or whatever. And sometimes you'll see an elephant, but you won't see an ant. So somebody who you do trust may give you a piece of advice and they may very well be right. And then, uh, so that's basically what it is. So it's loose, tight, tight in the sense of if I feel strongly about something, I'm confident, I've studied it. I know what I'm talking about. I, again, I feel strong about it. Bang, we're doing it, even if it's crazy. And if I don't feel as strong about it, I have feelings about it, but not, you know, as strong about it then I will ask and uh, get their opinion. And, and, I, and it's worked for me because it shows my players that I trust them. It's not just me, again, being a dictatorship, I run the show. And, and something that I also always say, and I say this to my family, uh, my wife and daughter, if we pull the same rope at the same time in the same direction for the same purpose, we'll get a great result. So that's basically uh, two of my leadership styles and the other one I picked up from Hall of Famer and Super Bowl winning coach Dick Vermeil, when and that's basically the theme of my book, that your players, your people, they won't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. 
And when I listen to you describe the lose tight style of leadership, it's really a simplified version of assertive leadership. And I like what you said. We're not meant to know everything all the time and and we're leading to help people become better leaders and evolve every day. And it's interesting because when you say the word assertive leadership, a lot of times people hear aggressive and that that's kind of a fine line. So I love the way you frame that. My my second question has permanent residency on this show and it's we've had a lot of laughs from this question. I I, I will remind you it's only a 30 minute show. That's that, that's your prelude to the question. What yeah. imperfections does Claudio bring to his heart-centered leadership? Um, you know, I, I can tell you the story that it, it's, it's a very true story. It happened on my birthday, October 14th, uh, back in, I believe, 2007. And it was a game that if we win this game, it is the most wins ever at Carnegie Mellon University. But the, and that's what I wanted because that team deserved that, that label, that, that win. And the team was, I heard them, they were whispering, we got to win this game for coach. It's his birthday. So we were losing eight, nothing. And then I heard them say, but we got to win this game. We got to win this game. We made an unbelievable comeback that we tied it up eight, eight. And the kid who hit the double, Brett, I had something to do. I had something that coaches usually don't have time to do. And that's think. So, cause it was a pitching change. So I called the runner over. I said, look, if the ball is hit to left field, I'm sending you. He doesn't have an arm. If it's hit to center field, it's wet. He doesn't have an arm. But if it's hit to right field, I want you to stay here at third base because we have the, the best hitters on the team coming up. Don't get too excited. I know this fan screaming. It's my birthday. Most wins ever. Terrific. Do not, if it's hit to right field, stay here. Do you understand me, Brett? Yeah, coach, I got it. I said, Brett, don't mess up. If it's hit to right field, very simple. You stay here with me at third base. Coach, I got it. Uh, Brett, don't mess this up. We got our best hitters coming up. Coach, I got it. Okay. Well, the ball's hit to right field. What do I do? I send him. I just got done telling him not to run. I send him. And he was thrown out by a mile. Okay. So then I told my team, hey, get me out of this. And they said, don't worry, coach. We'll get you out of it. Long story short, we didn't. We lost. And I was in tears at the end of it. We we meet at the uh, left field. And I wear sunglasses when I coach and my sunglasses were catching my tears. Mm. And I told them, Hey, I'm sorry. I blew the game. So I, and I will answer your question, but because I treat my players well, they say that my pitcher said, coach, it wasn't your fault. If I would have pitched better then we would have won. My catcher said, coach, if I'd have gotten that hit in the third inning with the bases loaded, we would have won. My center fielder said, if I'd have made that catch, we'd have won. They blame themselves, not me. Now, what is my imperfection? If anything, because I, I, I've worked very, very hard at, at, at this game over the years, and I'm always learning. Um, maybe, just maybe, the emotion gets to you. That's why I told that story. And it's good to have emotion, but you kind of have to bring it in just a little bit. Just a little bit. And... So that's happened to me. I'm an emotional, I'm Italian, I am emotional. And, but, but that's one of my strengths too, yeah. because I wear my emotion on my sleeves. I'm passionate, I'm mm-hmm. demonstrative. I just don't sit there at third base and say stupid stuff. I actually coach, okay? Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, an imperfection, um, you know, if you want to say that, again, uh, I'll say this, it's on your, your question, I'll, I, I do some things in boxing. It's almost like a boxer going into an event and say to his opponent or future opponents, here's my weakness. You know, if there if there's a weakness in, in me, which I really don't think there is, let them find it. Yeah. But uh, but if anything, you know, I, that, that story came to mind whenever you asked that question. But I don't really know if it's a weakness. I wouldn't, or an imperfection. I wouldn't say it's a weakness. That's a beautiful story. What a lovely story. Okay, my third question. I can't wait to hear you answer this. 
People work really hard over their career, whether they're an entrepreneur, a leader at any level. Confidence is a really hard thing. And you say that you've worked so hard to have the confidence that you have as a leader or anything that you're doing. Really great question. How how did you get the confidence? But more importantly, how do you sustain the mindset to keep the confidence as a leader? Because you wear many hats. A great question. Um, when it comes to hitting, teaching hitting, we're seeing a hole in a hitter swing, which means he won't be he or she won't be able to hit a particular pitch. I'm very very good at that, and I would say. And, and I'm not trying to come off in a bad way, but I'm extremely, extremely confident that I could talk hitting with anybody and be better than them when it comes to teaching hitting. OK, I do a lot of hitting camps, hitting lessons and obviously with my team. So I'm excellent at teaching hitting. Now, what made me be able to say something like that? Study, study, study. Watch, watch, watch. And I've also had the good fortune of knowing a lot of former major leaguers since I was a little kid and asking them questions. But not only that, to have common sense, common mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, one time I was I had a meeting at this restaurant and I'll tell you exactly what happened. I'm walking this way towards the meeting. There was a monitor on the on this racks, whatever. And it had this one particular baseball player. It took me. I'll lie to you and say a full second, but less than a second to see what the hole was in his swing. And I said to myself, if his coaches fix it, this guy's going to be an unbelievable player. Well, that was in 2008. This team cut this player, traded them, I want to say two years ago. They never fixed him. Nobody fixed him. I know for an absolute fact, okay, absolute fact, I could have fixed him in 20 minutes, let alone years, not even 20 minutes. He's an unbelievable athlete. And it was just tiny little common sense adjustments. Okay. So again, trial and error, you listen to all these hitting philosophies, which are awful, especially compared to mine. But what I see, for example, I have a gray jacket on. It's not, you know, it's common sense. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. Okay. Now you have chairs behind you. I can see that. I don't need you to tell me, Claudio, there's chairs back here. I can see that. The things that I see are common sense. Why don't others see it? I think everybody tries to make things a little more complicated than they have to be. Mm-hmm. They, they, I don't know if it's an insecurity thing or maybe they just don't know what they're doing. Okay, on any level, you say, well, they're, they're pro baseball. What do you call a guy who finished last in med school? You call him a doctor. Okay, now I've worked very hard. I'm honest with, my, with myself. I take a ton of notes. Have been taking notes in years because the people on TV announcing games, in my opinion, aren't that good. But I can sit here with you, Deb, and show you what the guy said on TV, what the hitter actually did, and show you why he messed up, why he's messing up, and how to fix him. And you and you would say, you know what? You're right, and it's common sense. But I try to keep things simple. Complexity is the enemy of success. OK, so I try to keep things simple, especially when you're in a hitting slump. OK, you don't need somebody making things really difficult. And for example, one of the things that's being taught is to hit the lower half of the ball to create backspin. It is, impo- it is impossible to try to hit the lower half of the ball consistently to create backspin. That is a lie. So why do people teach it? It's to show that they know something that you don't. I can do something that you don't. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm trying to help my team. Okay. So, and, and I'm, I'm extremely confident that when I talk hitting, we're just using hitting as an example that, uh, so how do I get the confidence by studying the right, the wrong, by having big ears and listening and big eyes and listening to everybody and then deciding for the good and the bad, just like, you know, a, a politician, hopefully people, you know, they listen to this person, listen to this person and they pick what's, You know, good. If you would have seen a submission from me saying something awful or um, negative or not much of a resume, you probably would have said, you know what, we're not going to have this guy on. But whatever it is you saw, you liked, here I am. So 
you were confident that hopefully I would do a, you know a half decent interview. So, and, but I, but I, I, I do see, love I imperfection, see. hence the, hence the name of the show. You know, yeah. it's really interesting because one of my favorite lines that I've used in this show quite a bit, and even when I'm coaching, and and you've just alluded to it so beautifully. It's common sense. It is, but it's not common practice. It's not. It's, it's like well having put. the leadership language and then not having the behavior to go with what you're saying, what you are as a leader. Well said. That's, I love that. It's the first time somebody's brought that up on the show. So, and, and oh, hitting, oh, yeah. just, just as a disclaimer here, we're talking about hitting a baseball here, people. Just in the right. context, in case people are tuning in later. Um <laughs> It's, it's all related to sports and agility. And, and I just, I love the way that you have framed that. And it's so, so Thank true. You. We don't need to complicate things. And how many times do leaders say, let's go back to the basics, which is really what you're, you're talking about. Why did you leave it to begin with? Well, because it's what you said. Some people like to, it's like the game of telephone. I'm going to bring you back to camp. You start off with apple and you end with banana because people want to put that little spin on it like that ball and that that strategy that you alluded to. Why right. can't we just hit the ball and not worry about where on the ball and spinning it and adding something else into something to make it more complex because you wanted to instill some new information? Exactly. That's what happens on a very wide scale. So it's such a great example. Okay, my last leadership question, you talked about in your own life and career, we all have ups and downs. And I believe, you know, when we're down, I call that the valley and it's it's a hell of a place to get to and it's even harder to get out of, but it's how we get from A to B and A to B is never linear. So give us one strategy and also an emotion because we feel and we think, how did you get back on the ball diamond? Let's use your, your analogy of baseball. How did you always get the courage to get back up uh, with the ups and downs to get yourself from A to B? Because that, that's a really... And that, there were a ton of... Yeah, there, there were... Ton of ups and downs, and and the worst down was now I I, I had this dream August nineteenth nineteen seventy three I was eight years old went to my first pirate game I came I lived in the same house I grew up in this room I came in my my dad was about ten feet away and he said did you have a good time I said I did my uncle took me he used to work at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh he said did you have a good time I said I did but I know what I want to do with the rest of my life. Mm. And my mom was there. My mom was great. And they and they said, well, OK, if that's what you want to do, I want to be in pro baseball. They said, if that's what you want to do, we'll do everything we can to make your dreams come true. My parents were unbelievable, unbelievably supportive, gave me love, taught me things. Uh, my mom, two days ago yesterday, was the 35th year anniversary that she passed away. Mm. And she was only 48. But when she passed away, Deb, and I, I went to the casket. I gave my mom a kiss. That's the first time she never kissed me back. But before that, she said, I'm not going to give up this fight. She had cancer. She said, you promised me that you won't give up your dream, our dream of professional baseball. I was 23 at the time. And, but anyway, so I go to the casket and my dad, I'll never forget. He had these thick hands. He was only about five, five, had these thick hands. He reached over with his left hand, grabbed me by the right hand. He said, I know what you're thinking. Because I was done. I didn't care about baseball anymore. I was just going to get a job and be done with it because I, I just had nothing left. And plus, you know, things weren't going great in that path of going after our dream. He said, you can't give up. You're the only thing to keep her name alive. You promised her that you'd keep the dream going. And she wants you to keep going. And I'm telling you, as corny as it may sound, like you hear the Rocky themes, right? And through the years... So many ups and downs, people throwing grapes at my feet for me to slip and put obstacles. Literally, that's another story. But throwing things at my feet for me to slip. People telling me to quit baseball, grow up, be a man. These are people I cared for. Be, be uh, realistic. It's not going to happen. It's a pipe dream. And it took me, I was 36 years old, okay, 
when, when I finally got my, my pro job. And, yeah. uh, but it was hell, but I didn't give up because I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want to disappoint my parents. I promised both my parents that I would make that dream come true. And, and uh, Warren Buffett and Alex Rodriguez, another guy I studied, say there always has to be someone in your life that you don't want to disappoint. I did not want to disappoint my parents. So that's what gave me the, the push to go after it. And I'm telling you something else that gave me the push to go after it, not just my parents, but the people who didn't want me to succeed. Not that they didn't believe I could, they didn't want me to. And I was not going to let them win. Your worst enemy can be your best ally. And I kept pushing, getting knocked. I was climbing the ladder, dropped down. I got to division one, assistant baseball coach. Then I, I left that job, disappeared for two years. My next job was at a very small school making $800 a year, a year. Then I got the, that was in 99. Then I got my pro opportunity and I still have the job obviously in January of 2001. So it's really been up and down. And, and thank God, thank my parents, thank James Gamble, the owner of the Global Scouting Bureau and everybody who hired me and thank me that things happened the way they did. Well, it's, you know, it's, we have a lot of serendipity. I, my dad was 54 when he died and he's been gone 36 years. So very close to you. And yeah. the last thing my dad said to me at 21 was, I'm not going to be here for you, but you need to own your own business and you need to work with people. You'll figure it out. So that, that yeah. hits me on a visceral level and good for you. Okay. I'm going to switch to my fab good four. Deal. We're going to have four fun questions just to just to get to know you a little bit. There's no thinking. We want to know what's on the top of that agile, sporty leadership mind of yours. First question, yeah. what is a word or phrase that you use frequently in your leadership? Turn it up. I like that. Turn it up. Um, turn it up. You know, if, if, just turn it up. Turn up the emotion. Turn up the desire. Turn up the effort. Turn it up. Love that. What's a book that's really inspired you at any juncture in your life? What's the name and the author and why was it inspired? My book and me, well, you, you, of you course. Who's your book? We're going we're uh, gonna, uh, to tell everybody about your book. I got to send it to you. Absolutely. What was I, the- I'll tell you, there, there, there's a few books. One of them, uh, business-wise, uh, and it helped with leadership and everything else, but Greg Norman's uh, The Way of the Shark, mm -hmm. unbelievable book. And then- um, then uh, there was a uh, a TV, what do you call him, a TV pastor, I guess, Robert Schuller, Dr. Robert Schuller. And it was Tough Times Live or Last, But Tough People Do. Um, mm -hmm. So those are the books that really had them. I mean, I, I read constantly, constantly, constantly. Um, those two books um, and, and books on Rocky Marciano, former boxer, boxing champion. But those two, three books are the ones that... Uh, have had the most I'm impact you. I on love that. Okay, third question. Let me give you some context. I'm granting you a wish. You get to have dinner with a leader who really inspires you. Now, this leader could be living or maybe they've passed away. Who are you having dinner with and what is the dinner conversation? Um, well, three people. I got to, obviously, number one and two are my mom and dad because they really made the path available. They led the path for me to be doing what I'm doing. There's an old Italian saying, if you ever see a turtle on top of a fence post, you know, he didn't get there alone. They helped me without question. And my dad went through hell in his life. Mm. And one time I asked him, everything that you went through, and he went through some bad things, tough things. How did you get through it? He very simply said, I had to, I had you to raise. And my mom, when my dad was sick, she had to take over. And she did. A, a, a young girl from Italy coming to the States, uh, she took over. So my mom, I, plus I'd love to see my mom and dad again, to be honest with you. And the third leader without question, what? Jim Valvano. Jim Valvano was a friend of mine. If you ever heard of the Jimmy V Cancer Fund on ESPN, the don't give up, don't ever give up. Jim Valvano, who was also the head basketball coach in NC State 1983 champions. Um, the Cinderella story of all Cinderella stories. So my parents and Jim Valvano, uh, John Calipari, the head coach at Kentucky, 
Um, Greg Norman, so there's a bunch of people I'd like to have dinner with. And then they're not all Italians either. Well, that's, it's, it's such a special question and, and it hits people it in different places. So that's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to ask you to finish the show by answering this sentence. Heart-centered leadership is? Again, what I said at the beginning of the show, your players, your people, they will not care how much you know until they know how much you care. My players know the best player, the one who maybe just barely made the team. I'm there at three o'clock in the morning for them. I'm there at three o'clock in the afternoon. Care for your people, genuinely care. My mom used to always say, never speak from the neck up, speak from the heart up, care <laughs> and be passionate. And, you know, and, and you, you want to be treated like you're treated, you know, like you would like to be treated. And if you're down, if you're hurting, if you're in a slump, if you're not doing something well, if you failed, you don't want somebody to browbeat you, make you, you know, make things worse. You want them to be there and to, to, to help you. And, and all my players, and in my book, I was blown away at the things that they remembered me saying to them and how I do ask about their personal, hey, how's your girlfriend? How are things at home? This and another thing. So basically, care and communicate. 